Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons. The winner of last week's poll, Highlander, the animated series. Oh, we got some. Oh, no problem, Gorilla. But let's get right to it. Both the panel link and the link to watch along on Cosme are in the pinned comment. We're going to start off with episode one. How you doing, Teague? There can be only one. I didn't know this existed. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't very popular, even though it got two seasons. My mic's a little hot. Let me fix that shit. That should be better. So we've got a third McLeod. Yeah. Completely different so continuity. Right. We start in the movie as Connor. The TV show live action was Duncan. And this guy's yep. Quentin. So he's a McLeod, but that's it. Pretty much. Doing everything right, right out of the box with some good, very, very representative Highlander music. Yeah. I wonder if it's Brian May. It may be. You know who I'm speaking of, right? He was the guy on the uh if he was the guy on the TV show, wasn't he? Well no, uh Brian May is the guitar player from Queen who was the movie uh movie um soundtrack people. The TV show star is um Adrian Paul. Yeah, Adrian Paul. Uh but stuff like the music and production were a lot of similar people on all three of them. Honestly, then you would you would try to give Brian May from Queen a few hundred thousand dollars and just he could do this in a weekend. He's great. Yeah, this uh, show unfortunately got overshadowed by the Adrian Paul series. They both came out in the same year. It should have worked. Is this cartoon like what's the uh, approximate age level? This is a pretty de a pretty in uh, complicated concept. This can't be just for kids. I mean, kids uh, could probably enjoy it. This is a uh, like TV PG, but they didn't really have any rating system back then, so it's more around ten to twelve year old target. You know, like a 10 or 12 year old smart enough to understand like close encounters. Yeah. Which, which is, which is possible. Very possible. Old enough to know the Highlander movie and series, but not old enough for their parent to let them see it. <laughs> you have to have young parents who don't realize that the Highlander is about slicing people's heads off. It's kind of hard to peg what year he is. We've got like medieval and future tech next, like side by side. Oh, this is a post apocalyptic future. That's cool. That's a really cool. <laughs> That's a fucking great idea. Turn this down a bit. Yeah, they set it all up in the uh, intro 700 years after basically the apocalypse. So he's the last generation of people to see like a real civilized world similar to ours. He's born contemporary to you and I. No, oh, he's never seen civilization. 
Ramirez there, did. Said, Why is Ramirez alive? In this reality, he never came across uh, Connor. Okay, so oh, everything's different. We just okay, it's multiversal almost. Yeah. I'd say I do a better Sean Connery, but this guy's all right. Yeah, completely different continuity. By the way, you left the N word letter out of your uh, title. Oh, crap. <laughs> you need more representation in that title. Or, yeah, so their world is like pretty close to what we see in the flashbacks from Terminator or flash forwards. Yeah. And his mom looks like Tarana from Heavy Metal. These animators knew what they were doing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, if this was the movie, he's about to get a non-fatal wound. Is that our Kurgan, or is he a TV show bad guy? A TV show bad guy. Thank God, another good choice. Ramirez is the only real connection. This is so not for kids. That is probably a little much. That is the nineties. They didn't show him die, but he was—he had to be killed to wake up a Highlander. And I guess his mom essentially force healed him a little too, because she's messed up from doing it. No, no, she got uh, messed up by the uh, Raiders. I knew she was already messed up. I just—I thought she gave him maybe like a like a jump start. Could she really be his sister? Adopted. But she literally just told him that you're not really a Dundee. You're a McLeod. But she's really I, a Dundee. Oh, she is really. Okay, so. It's like, I stole my, my mount from the game Joust. You may remember it from the 80s. Oh, I was wrong. Uh, the Adrian Paul series was 92, not 94. It was still going, I think. It, it lasted yeah, four or five seasons. It was very popular. And it had a spinoff called Raven? Yeah. Uh, the original Highlander series was six seasons. And then it had the spinoff of the Raven following his uh, immortal girlfriend. I think the deal is Raven starts in like season four and then there's a couple of seasons of overlap, but I like Raven was the weaker show. I don't think it outlasts Highlander. I think they ended at about the same time. Uh, Raven, I think was only one season. Yeah, it was 
that that was like his most popular girlfriend, and they thought she was a show, but she just that was an overreach. Yeah. At the same time, they're brand bombing themselves by releasing movies under another license that suck. The Mario Van Peoples one might be the best non first movie Highlander of them all. And it's not that good. I think uh, Highlander of the Raven was uh, 1998. All right, so his whole series ends and. They couldn't get it renewed or they couldn't afford him, so they gave it a shot with her is probably what happened. She kicked her skirt yeah. on, boy. Ah, uh, so, okay. Okay, we get the backstory. They should have chosen another name, but this is a very good concept. I watched the credits, so I know it's not, but his henchman sounds like a Mark Hamill voice, doesn't he? Yeah, very similar to the Mark Hamill Joker voice. The, the character's look didn't help nerf it. Do you remember the game, Joust? The arcade game? A little before my time. They they lifted his mount, whatever that creature is, right from it. I mean, they had little stubby wings, but no difference. They basically took the uh, flying dinosaur chicken from Heavy Metal. Yeah, when I first saw it, it reminded me of uh, some mounts in Zelda. Zelda goes way back. When's the first Zelda game, right? Yeah, I think it's the 80s. Right, I think it's coming out on like primitive tape drive computers at the same time that the arcade game is, is out. Uh, the uh, Joust arcade game. Joust was a great arcade game. It was for dumb people like me. All you had to do is drop down on the other person from above to win. <laughs> it's the quickening. They won't call it the quickening? Is 
No, the quickening is when he takes the head. That's just his sense of another immortal. That's it, it, yeah, when they sense another immortal, I think uh, Ramirez in the movie goes, This is the quickening Highlander. Because he, he teaches them how to like zoom in on the life force of the of the deer. Remember, it's like, Feel the stag, feel his heart. Damn, Ramirez, you're dumb. I want to work for Cordana, Cortano, man. Like, it gives you magic mushrooms and lets you lay around dressed like David Bowie in a plague doctor outfit. Well, if you do that, you actually have to dress him. Well, no, he get, he, he was just girding him, right? He was giving him his armor. Oh, I'm sure he has to do a little bit more than that. Let's see. It's time for the sh it's time for my Schnitzelwassen. Yeah. Oh, we added a new Highlander rule. If you get mushed up into pieces, you're also no longer alive. Well, your head's off your shoulders either way. That's true. They just they don't they can't say it that way, right? It's just a cartoon. This is a great cartoon. It's just somebody lost their way making it because it's what's its audience? Thirty year olds? It's really this is good shit. Might want to check that tip jar. I guess Raymond Pippin is the one credited with the music. And Harvey will have Vader. Right. We got all the, European names. Yeah. Like super European, not Americanized in the least. All right. So it's not, it's nobody from Queen, but it was a, an apt pupil of their music. Apparently. This battle music right now is fine. I'm digging it. They just went with a four-piece heavy metal style band for their for their music, and it was the right freaking choice for Highlander. Yeah. At least, especially the cartoon, right? Because there's some traditional sounding music too, but I think it's synthesizers doing the orchestra orchestral parts. I can't tell. That's a real horn.
So this guy's a lot like the black immortal that fights Ramirez, uh, the Kurgan in New York. Well, yeah, they took inspiration for right. characters, but uh... they're trying to let us know who the good guys and bad guys are by just sort of having them be similar. Yeah. But Cortan has uh, the Kurgan's exact same sword. Yeah, a little bit stylized for the cartoon. It, right, it's impractical it in the, the real Onyx world. Blade. It's Onyx. It's got a very similar hilt, though, and like the blade style while bigger. And basically, yes, he has the Final Fantasy VII sword. <laughs> Wow, that was an A+. Plus. Yeah, very underrated show. It's a shame a lot of people don't remember it. Or a blessing for, for great channels like this that show people stuff for free. Where everyone should you know hit the like and follow buttons. Yeah. Please. They've got a convenient enough solution. Most Highlanders just opted out. And a new one had to be born before anyone was willing to confront Cortano. Yep. See, this is a very good uh, Queen-style music. This guy listened yeah. to Flash Gordon and Highlander a lot. I'm sure their uh, marching orders were, here's the first movie. Give us something as similar as you can. What about the planet Zeist? Shut, shut, shut up. <laughs> do we need do we need a planet Zeist theme? No, you, you won't be needing that. No, just the one's good. Well, I think we, we, we've thrown away that terrible idea, right? Uh, Garmart Television, a uh, French company, worked on both the live action and this animated series. That's the primary connection between the two. Well, you could see with the uh, name names like Siegfried and like Jean Claude uh, uh, de Detresky or whatever it was that that the, these were like Belgian, Dutch, and French people for sure. Yeah. If I if I remember correctly, Highlander One was a pan European production, mostly German. Oh, uh, or French, maybe mostly French. But there was a thing. There was al almost no New York filming. That was exteriors and like B roll only. Yeah, I know the people behind it were mostly European. That's why uh, Lambert. Or yeah, well, Lambier's uh, American. Yeah, yeah. He's he's one of us. He just he moves right away. Uh, he he's raised in France and then educated in England, so he gets that strange accent because he's like going back and forth to America, to France, to England, and yeah. he has no real home country. But he's yeah, technically he's, an American. He's primarily known in France, though. Oh, that's where his career is. Yes, I wouldn't argue that for a moment. But what I would say is, for a generation, he's, of course, Raiden. Unfortunately. That's a lot of people have told me they have... Song. Yeah. Uh, you know what? To make the... That, is that the very first comic book movie? It is, right? 
I'm sorry, the very first video game uh, movie? I think it is. Or, you know, discounting Pac Man TV. I think uh, the Mar Mario Brothers movie came first. You know, before she had a smartphone, there were there were things to like about Alyssa Milano. I'll just leave it at that. I hate this snarf type creature. Yeah, unfortunately, those got popular. Star Trek, the animated series, had like a big fight with uh, the network before they got on air. Every crew member was supposed to have like a child companion. So it's just like, no, no, Kid Kirk doesn't work. Oh, nothing like child labor. Very mortal. Who knows? They're 600 years old, Hyon. It's the planet from Miri. You hope there's a reason. You haven't seen this guy in 700 years. That's that's a good point, right? Although they're staying with the show's idea that two, three hundred years ago is like last weekend to a Highlander. Yeah, there's something I always wondered about. I guess Highlanders eat because they can. Well, they won't permanently die, but it gets uncomfortable. You'll get thin. You'll be weak. Yeah. You will technically starve to death, but you'll just get back up in a little bit. You wake up fully nourished and start it over again. Imagine being stranded on this like, sulfuric desert island as a Highlander. <laughs> There's an episode of the live action series that goes through something like that. That's kind of genius. Uh, no problem, so, Gorilla. Gorilla, you're doing the good work that may that, that that is much more important. Well, ladies and gentlemen, came here looking for substance. You found it. This is pretty damn good. Oh, yeah, definitely. It this is just one of those things, unfortunately, mid-90s, that's peak for that generation of cartoons. And swords and stuff are going out, and, and sci fi is coming in bigger. You know yeah. what I mean? The sun is setting a little bit on swords and sorcery, even though it's going to stay enduring the way the sun sometimes sets on westerns for a while. Yeah. Yeah, He Man's still in the past. Unfortunately, this is right. around the era of the new adventures of He Man, which. Is cross contaminating yeah. this and, and turning people off because this, you know, what the other problem with this cartoon is they spent too much goddamn money on it. It looks great, it's really well done. You know, the production costs are high. Yeah, I imagine so. Look at all these beautifully rendered rooms and stuff, like every environment is really well done. All right, so you can knock a Highlander out with poison. And Highlanders do need sleep, but that's not what happened here.
<laughs> going to need a pair of larger stones if I'm going to confront Cortana. He made a bread bomb. So the poison in the bread is explosive. Fine. He's already wearing his armor. Would you agree that this animation is somewhat similar to the final segment of the movie Heavy Metal? A little bit, yeah. It's not like Thundercats where we figured out it was the guy from the guys from The Hobbit very quickly. So like at least some inspiration from there. Yeah, if not some of the same animators, guys who worked with them. The look of your, let's call them NPCs, is really similar, too. Help me out here. Ramirez is one of the Jita, 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 whatever, the Highlanders who've given up their swords. Yeah. So he has no sword. Correct. Right? Like he can't he can't he can't delete anybody. Well, he can fight mortals, he just can't fight other mortals. They've saved all this technology from pre-apocalypse, but not no guns, <laughs> you know? Well, no guns because uh, there's a bit of a rule. That's why uh, shows like G.I. Joe had lasers. Oh, you mean a rule in our world? Yeah. I don't think these people making a cartoon for thinking about Czech children and Slo uh, Slovak children watching their cartoon considered it that deeply but you may have something there <laughs> that was good next does he set a book on fire to light their way and be like a little light reading He says that like she's supposed to know who he is. I, or he's just like very big on branding, right? Like, welcome, welcome. I'm Quentin, Quentin McLeod, your host. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Janitors, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be sh short for progenitors. They're calling them jeditors, but it's it's sounding like either Jedi or janitor when it hits the ear. That 
That that name was a mistake. Aside from that, no real problems at all. He's going to Willy Wonka them here. And we just had a little Cloud City action. Yeah. And I believe we're going to get some uh, garbage masher. There is nothing wrong with this in context of what we have here. But they are, like, they're consciously invoking Star Wars. They must have been like, He's just writing books and like stuff like that. It'll do Indiana Jones, but George Lucas will never make another Star Wars movie. We're 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 safe. It, it's the '90s, so do you think like this is the kind of thing where George Lucas was like? I uh, I want uh, I want you to make sure you TiVo all the uh, Highlander shows. Find it enjoyable. <laughs> oh, he watched this. Yeah, definitely. Ah, uh, way I see it, they uh, watched me, so I'm uh, I'm gonna watch them. Looks like he made more of those little bread bombs. Who knew pastry could be so explosive? I they needed a line there, but like, oh, they've used a common explosive to poison me, you know, something. I love the whirling blades that are like extra mean. They've got te saw, te saw teeth and everything. It's great. This is great. Yeah. That, that was, yeah, garbage masher meets indie, right? This guy is totally heavy metal. Yeah, sure he will. Ramirez is, he's like a force ghost. He's really there, but he can't seemingly do anything. Like he won't grab a weapon and go after bad guy number one. Yeah, they had to have some reason for the janitors not to actually be fighting. Have to make the kid the hero. That part's okay. I don't know why there's, you know, Ramirez couldn't say be give it a little more active role. It's like I've sworn off the shore. That's why I carry this club, you know, something like that.
Yeah, they don't got a budget for two new characters. Check out this snucker lemon I have. Oh, your street was the most generous for food donations. Congratulations, Gorilla. Very important to help other people. What a you know, really good thing to do. The last weapon. I can't wait to find out what that is. I think that's the, I hear nothing. That's the intro. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's real it's In silent. Okay. Yeah, the invincible is just the uh Distributor. company, I believe. Here we go. I, I, I might have called him a Highlander. He is a Highlander. It's clearly we got like three the Highlanders at this point. There's no singular Highlander. Well, in this version, I just got the one. Did you see the logical but botched movie of the from like hived off the show where they bought Lambeer back? Uh endgame. I think that's the one. Like they go back to when he was with Heather, and they show like McLeod and Heather together, and like it's twenty five years later, and like McLeod looks it, but she doesn't. She looks fucking great. Like Heather like slept in a vat of oil of Olay. The actress didn't age, so she's like, I get older and older, and you stay the same. And like Lambier looks like hell because he like lived hard or something, and he's just like, yes, I'm immortal. And like you're like, wait, what? It didn't match up at all. And they were trying to make her look old, and she still she just looked fantastic. I hope that he meant look at the cliff and not, hey, cliff, look at the cliff. Like, hey, at least they saw him. I just, yeah, that and just put, these guys are fairly cool. We're doing a good job, like, minting a new, like, one episode villain. Yeah. They had to have a little variation from the bad immortal. You know what? They're already better than um who are those asshole dark side users from uh from the Kenobi show? The Inquisitors, they're already cooler than yeah. the Inquisitors by a lot. Oh, I'm sure these guys were meant to at least be presentable for the possibility of a toy line. And give you a chance to kill a few people. Like, we haven't uh, shown this it. Is but... the story of the gun. Oh, really? Great.
Hey, Jim. Hey, a lot of uh, little messages. Hi, Cody guy. And hey, Cody guy. And hey, Jim. Welcome to the show. This is a really good one. All right, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> he can walk. I wish we had gotten a better look at those like beasts of burden with the balloons and the cargo pods. Cause we didn't, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm trying to extrapolate the hell's going on, but we didn't get like a good establishing shot of them. Yeah. They're this is much. the most, we finally get the context now. Yeah. Yeah. They're just haulers. I, just, I wanted to see them more and understand them a little bit. Like I do now before they, before the attack, you know what I mean? I was like, what exactly is going on? That's a nitpick. I still think this is really good. Oh, yeah, definitely. They did pretty well with the Scots looking like dystopian but still very obvious scottish see this is different from like our movie lore because once we find out you're a highlander no one wants you around Yeah, they do pretty well with some of these PSA episodes. Now, I'm not crazy here. The PSA in this one is don't play around with, like, fully automatic weapons. Pretty much, yeah. But that's something everyone can get on board with. An aircraft carrier. All right, they saw Battleship Yamoto or Star Blazers. <laughs> yeah, he's crawling. a thousand years old. He hasn't been. <laughs> oh, if you have a baby, they know that trick right away. <laughs> Wait, what? Where? Hey, he's the ruler of the world. He's going to have more than one enemy.
But is 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 this realm they're going to called Wakanda? <laughs> We've got lots of blood and stuff for a cartoon. I think it's going to be a little bit more than a few days. I know. Wow. Um Historians have retroactively classified the machine, the fully automatic machine gun as the first weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, they got to make some allowances. They were getting a nice fat check for a PSA message like that in an episode. Oh, yeah, it's going to really help them out with taxes, etc., in this country, I don't know if the Europeans give a shit. You know what I mean? I just I like I have I've only watched TV in like two European countries, and it was Star Trek both times. Yeah, that's okay. It aired in this country, so they got a check. Right? Yes, you're right. And which is exactly why when D when uh we have the Star Trek TNG conversation. Why would anyone voluntarily get addicted to drugs? It's exactly 90 seconds long. It's three commercials long. Yep. Always have to have that perfect cut for a commercial. It wasn't... I, I think that that's how they, they portion out the tax break for each PS, uh, commercial length PSA. You get X. Because there's th yeah. that's too much of a coincidence. The conversation starts and cuts off like kind of abruptly, just like, all right, well, I've made my point. I came from the only planet in the Federation that sucks. Bye. This bullet comes from what they call a machine gun. <laughs> I'll give him one thing. He does a pretty good imitation of Sean Connery. He does. He's homing in on it. It's been better every episode. This He's like near perfect now. Episode one, a little shaky. You know, with this machine gun in, in play as the plot device for this one, will he say, things don't react very well with bullets in here. I mean, they are on a ship, you know? He feeling like he's like, in a former life, I was a Soviet submarine captain, Highlander. Hey, the only thing, after 700 years, how does he have any ammo left? Read about it in a book and made more? Although, like, uh, somehow they don't really strike me as guys who can read. No, they don't. Um, I'm guessing we had that, like, at the at the end of this. Uh, 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 the, oh gosh, <laughs> I'm guessing at the end of the dark times. They were doing nothing but making bombs and bullets all day. It was like a world of North Korea's, right? Yeah, but still 700 years. It's a really long time.
they've kidnapped people who can read and made them make bullets. I don't know, but this is pretty cool. They've seen the movie Waterworld and they're doing a better job of it. And not hard to do a better job than Waterworld. At times, very interesting, but in general, I agree. Yeah, it's a fun concept, but... Uh, the movie's 40 minutes too long. At least. Also could never turn a profit because of the disastrous uh, commitment of Kevin Costner to film on open ocean instead of in a sheltered harbor and build two half sets. He wanted to be able to go all the way 360 with the camera, so they were building the set in open sea. It was getting destroyed daily. And I think he may have messed up Ben Stiller's first real relationship with Gene Triplehorn making that stupid movie. I wouldn't be surprised that movie was a disaster on pretty much all fronts. Right, but the, like he he devised the movie that the one nude scene was he got to see all the goods and we got to see her ass. He hectored the director off the shoot. The guy just walked in. He was, like, he, he was just being another director. He's like, dude, you're an actor in this one. Leave me alone. He wasn't supposed to direct that. Waganda. Ooh. He's being a force ghost again. Yep. Rather than step in and intervene, he's like, I'm going to stay away and yell instructions. It's uh, Benedict Campbell doing the voice for Ramirez. He's a really good Sean Connery. Look at his, yeah. I would ask you this. Look where he's born. Is he really Scottish? You know what I mean? Something like that. He's from Quebec. So he's a really good voice actor. Yeah, he has a real impressive uh, lineup for the uh, voice credentials, voice credits. Let's hear it. Titans from 20, 2021. He's also in, well, this and the uh, Highlander. Uh, Adventure Begins. Donkey Kong Country cartoon. <laughs> I remember when King Donkey K Kong... It's like... He's also a voice on uh, Mystic Warriors. And Tales from the Crypt. Well, he turns into a total dick as soon as he gets that gun. All right, finally. He's like, you listen to me. It's like, at least get a club.
Man, that's a little bit unbelievable. Fucking 50 caliber round. Yeah. She would have burst like a grape. I was gonna, yeah, popped like a beefsteak tomato hitting a wall. Give the machine gun back to the lady of the lake. Let's hope there are no Gungan types on this planet. Well, it's still just plain old Earth. Right, but after what happened, we don't know. Like Some people could have gone Gungan from the radiation. You know what I mean? That's a, this is a weird place. We don't have any creatures like his thing he's riding on Earth. No, they just assumed uh, evolution would work a lot quicker than it does. Hey, we got. Well, we had like a radioactive war, so right mutations are probably introduced. Hello. How you doing, Jim? Doing good. Oh, you finally put me up here. I've been down there for almost ten minutes. Yeah, hey, I have. Way too ready. many stuff open right now. I was ready to fall asleep. Kind of weird looking cartoons and all the blood and shooting and bullets and America was kind of an afterthought in the marketing. This is like a European cartoon, so they're... Yeah. I like the Dougie videos from last week. Those are funny. The last episode was probably the worst. The first two were really good. See, look at all those first names. Gu Guillaume. Yeah, it, it's a primarily French production. I, I'm not. Yeah, I think it's primarily French, too. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think what it is is the second biggest production company is Belgian, where they speak both French and German. Because I think, like, they're, at least one of the partners was German in the original movie. Well, guns are a no-no, but incendiary bombs are A-OK. -okay. Right, exactly. Martha! Hey, Phantom Outsider. Hi. There can only be one Highlander. Okay, yeah, we, we had to make this cartoon. What we had to do is pretend there's no other Highlanders and that there's been a, 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 some sort of post-apocalyptic event uh, and that this is a new McLeod uh, and it's, it's semi-unrelated to the other ones and only some of the rules are the same, but it's good. Yeah. And uh, what happens is there are, the other immortals no longer count. Uh, they've thrown down their swords, Phantom. So uh, they they can only do what Force Ghosts do. Uh, they hang out and give advice. So Ramirez is cool, but he's like, so will not proactively help you much. Yeah, he more insults them than anything. That's it was called that was magic too. No, it was called a hand grenade. Oh, 
Well, are we going to now go on an anti-petrochemical rant, or is this just collateral to where we're going? Eh, a little bit of both. The, they, you know what? That's why it didn't last too. I think it's it's so well made. It looks so good that money was a problem, so they have to pander because that's happening now. This is pandering. That last episode was one hundred percent pander. Yeah. Oh, they need that check to offset the cost. It looks fucking great. If you got to pander a little to get something this good, at least it wasn't hurtful pandering. Like, they tried to be careful. They weren't like, all guns are bad. They're like, this is what's called an automatic machine gun. Like, they tried a little bit. A little bit. I think it was a machine gun, though, just because they look a lot cooler than a handgun. I don't know. Uh, can we, you know, like, can't read their minds? But it seemed to me like there was so, there was some cognizance of not pissing off Americans too much, and also that since it was a cartoon by nature, children were going to watch it no matter what, and people were going to make certain assumptions so they couldn't go too insane. Like, it's responsible. Yeah. Well, it was the '90s too. They weren't that over the top back then. That to um, Ruby Ridge, not even a thing. And you can be very Second amendment -y and still be like, 50 caliber machine guns aren't for a private citizen, maybe. I'm not saying that. The last episode did. You know what I mean? Yeah, they do a little bit cautious on some parts. Somewhat sensitive, but they're they're trying for that check. Just like if we just had a whole episode of sometimes on my planet, drugs were all we wanted, Wesley. Looks like this guy's been underground too long. Another decent one episode bad guy, though. The people in Marketplace are real ding dongs. <laughs> I got stuff up for sale, and this guy from Pennsylvania wants to come to Ohio to buy, to buy some ramps. Go to Harbor Freight near area and buy them there. It'd be cheaper. A lot closer to yeah Jeez. there's part yeah there's parts of ohio that are like obviously contiguous with pennsylvania but yeah depending upon where you are if you're in like cincinnati yeah. and you're going to philly don't need to go uh come from pa to ohio and back just for 50 dollar ramps <laughs> Unless you just want to travel to beautiful PA. I guess. Well, sometimes you need a reason to go out of state that we can tell the cops about. Yeah. Or your wife. Yeah, is this is this guy a janitor or just a free agent, former immortal? Don't even think he's immortal. He's just got some problems, but he's essentially like not so bad. Yeah, he used to work for the okay. janitor that ran the place, but uh, the janitor took off, and I think the pressure of the job and losing his kid 
made his mind take a vacation. He has uh, classically kooky characteristics. Yeah, he's got problems. Oh, wow. Here he is in the before time when life was better. He's a changeling. I don't know why everyone wears 417 as their number. Because <laughs> they like that number, I guess. The they book. found like they found like one military division's equipment or something. Already then. And when he says everything, he means everyone. <laughs> Sometimes Ramirez will like hang out wearing the 417 gear. I don't get it. While we're inside this aircraft carrier, perhaps I should tell you in a former life, they called me Ramish. Yeah, what what is the sister's name? It's like Cly, and then sometimes it's Dana. Dana was his daughter, who is dead right. now. And her name, but the, okay, so so McLeod's sister, so to speak, is Cly. It's Clive. 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 They've really fucked that name up. Oh, Clyde. I thought it's Clyde. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find a way to see it my way through it. Clyde would make more sense. This way, it sounds more like Clydesdale. Right. Well, that's logical. Clyde would maybe be uh, like slightly feminine. It's like it's like Michael Burnham cl calling her Clive. Okay, I'm getting it now. Wow, that is darkness, bro. And this is rated Y7. Y7? <laughs> Dude, this cartoon gives no fucks. It just snuffed a kid. Uh, off screen. Very important. Off screen. Well, we saw her, then we saw the explosion. Yeah. To be fair, when James Bond died, it wasn't much gorier. I mean, it was just he got enveloped in flames. In that stupid fucking movie. That's a scary dog. Descended from Snarf. <laughs> yeah, Snarf had a uh, unfortunate one night stand with some sort of centaur. <laughs> That's right. When he broke with his strict homosexuality. Damn. Damn it, man. The one, the one heterosexual encounter Snarf had. He's loaded with bombs. <laughs> 
we don't really use guns in this world, but we throw around a lot of bombs. Mm. George is like, I, uh, I think that uh, maybe maybe a Sith Lord would have hair sort of like that, but maybe it would be horns. Guy looks a little like Darth Maul. A certain vagary. The silhouette's the same. Thinking. Uh oh. He's Lord. panicking an awful lot for a guy who can't drown. It's true. He's he's just rubbing it in people's faces, right? It's the Emerald City. Open sesame. <laughs> Someone, someone at the door. <laughs> at least it made sense. We're into like the very heavy, very much movie heavy metal territory again. Dang. Someone has another number. I think that number's a rank. I feel like you're right. So we have a country whose name rhymes with Wakanda that has like an invincibility shield around it. Not too derivative. I wouldn't call the makeshift gate an invincibility shield. That uh, center structure, that's just the power generator. Good point. Like the Wakandan from the from like the Wakanda from Black Panther and all that shit. Like their 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 illusion shield isn't impenetrable either. I just yeah, this guy was smart enough to make some explosives though. Isn't Corten the name of an app? I don't know that. <laughs> nice nose. This guy is just so weird. They can all just grab their swords, kill him right now, and be like, all right, so back to where we were. No one's going to fuck around, right? Yeah. That or he can kill them all right now, right then and there. Yeah, there are several tactical opportunities being overlooked by both sides. Let's swing. <laughs> yeah, not quite Tarzan level, but pretty good. Cool.
and you'll never guess who she is. Raven? <laughs> Just say the crazy apple doesn't fall from far from the tree. Oh, my. It's Ramirez's daughter. Wait, in this world, Highlanders can have children, huh? Nope. She's no. Bomberman's kid. Oh! So she did... All right, so the explosion threw her clear. Now he's got a lot to live for. George Lucas saw that. Mm. That is right out of Phantom Menace, which had not been made yet. <laughs> Holy shit, I can't believe how much George Lucas absolutely watched this. Just say he's not quite as insane, but still keep sharp objects and things that go boom away from him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He, got, he hasn't given up his, his bandolier of hand grenades. Everyone into the in this world is very into the trench coat. Yeah, it's very useful. It's very good at concealing a, a, a katana or a bunch of hand grenades, and we're back at the... Okay, this is our end credits. <laughs> Just so everybody's clear, when we see these Druidish people hanging out at Stonehenge, those are the immortals deciding that they're only going to act like force ghosts. We get it in the narration, but it's just to be really clear. Yeah. Well, this series is so good, we'll go one more episode. Getting the power. I think this is the episode where he finally gets a proper quickening. Or at least their version of it. It's not perfect, but they're like really trying. Like someone sat down and thought for a while. For a while. They're not rolling stuff out super quick. They have the really smart one. Oh, wow, we finally see it. Yeah, we have a really good one-episode bad guy. The Sound of Madness. Every one of these has had a decent title, too. This was longer in Europe. This is just a continuation with n there's no there's no be previously on or anything. Hey, get hey, get your shirt on. <laughs> is it nitpick but a technical one it's society's down for 700 years no way paved roads still exist along with most multi-story structures well we had an aircraft carrier in the last ones <laughs> yeah uh yeah they're not, they're not playing by like the firmest set of rules but 
they're keeping it logical and it's not been stupid at all yet. It's never been stupid. If you want to say the PSA was heavy handed, that might've been stupid, but that was, it was what it was. I mean, you could see it plainly. Yeah. By the way, if he had pulled that trigger when they had him holding the weapon on himself, he would have been fine. Yeah, he also couldn't have been shown in the United States. Right, right, right. Of course not. My wonder, what I'm wondering here is if this isn't like the um, Futurama movies that were actually episode length. I think this was a long. This was one longer episode. Probably in production, yeah. You can't understand this one unless you've seen the last one. You know what I mean? There's no catch-up either. They just throw it at you. Huh? <laughs> yeah, their snarf doesn't make sense and really didn't need to be there. Boom. This is the most we've used him. I think he's just there to balance out the kid. Slightly cringe. Yeah, he is getting a little bit whiny. <laughs> that was a cool transition, though. The animator is really good. These people are, like, super trying. Shit, that's actually a decent plan. One thing that did survive the apocalypse was many, many David Bowie album covers because it's inspired the fashion of everyone in this world. Yeah, David Bowie music survives the apocalypse. Right alongside the cockroaches. This movie could, uh, this cartoon could use like a faction of like sentient cockroaches who are just evil. That would be great. <laughs> ever since Keith journey. Richards threw, ever since Keith Richards threw us out, threw us out of his band, we've been evil. There you get Connor. Wait. Connor McClaw's here? Not directly. Oh, they mentioned him. Ah. He picked up the right sword. He's wearing the right outfit. All right. Oh. 
Uh-oh. They couldn't find someone else who like had like a bad French accent and let them do it. <laughs> you may have beaten me this time, Cortan. But you will know your end has come. And that's the extent of Connor in this series. We're, we're left to assume. We don't know what happened next. They left the door open for him to show up, I guess. Other numbers. There's a 407 and a four. There's four seven ones. To the aircraft here. Are we are we doing the aircraft carrier again? Yeah, there's an aircraft carrier kind of hanging out in the dry sea. There it is. Yep. Well, we sort of flushed it out a couple of episodes ago. You can hang out there now, so it, it, that that's probably their ad hoc base of operations. Uh oh. That guy's coming. Don't worry, he has bread and a fuse. Uh oh. Voice work in this is really, really good. Who knew bread could be such a deadly weapon? A 50 caliber would really pay off if you just kept it somewhere and not used it all the time, like a pocket knife. Yeah. Especially if you're going up against a well armed tyrant. Ramirez wasn't like, we must keep it away, keep it secret, and keep the ammunition at a different place. This way, when we need to use it, we can.
No. It makes a little bit of sense because the lightning charged up the old electric, the old uh, hydraulics or whatever, and opened up the elevator on the aircraft carrier. Dropping him a fatal distance for one of us, but wow, look at that wall behind him. No, no, get back here. <laughs> He's pretty eager to die. Connor McLeod also got like out over his skis, pissed off, angry at Ramirez a few times and had to get calmed down until he was ready to fight the Kurgan. Uh oh. No, don't do it. <laughs> cool. I hate this fucking character. Please kill him. <laughs> I hate this fucking character too. Not the little girl, the little. Their snarf. They are terrible guardians. Well, he ain't that kid's guardian. He didn't give a crap about her. Only one that really cares about her is her brother. We had one other character that cared about her. She died for two minutes into episode one and never had a scene with her. All right. So basically, Quentin McLeod has fallen to the dark side. Essentially. All right, that, that came out of nowhere. Uh -oh. The 
the hibernation sickness is wearing off. Okay. Hey, Ramirez, find on some balls. They haven't figured out a way to do holy ground Highlander. Let's have a truce. So they're just like, we need to talk it out and think for a few hundred years. Some of these ideas are fucking awesome. I love that they hang out in an abandoned aircraft carrier. Little bagpipes there. The storm was all of 30 seconds. We got real fickle weather in this world. That's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah. Very, very good series. I hope to revisit that. Yeah, that was like there was there was stuff that within the cartoon world is not a freaking problem. You know, it wasn't movie quality, but it was this was really, really, really good. Yeah, definitely. It was different. <laughs> yeah. Hard they didn't know what the just TV Y7. It's because no one went back and thought about it again, and because they very wisely this was some of it was was wise. They're like, even in Europe, we can't be snuffing children on screen. The one time they did it, it was a plot device to keep, and the, and the, and the kid was actually okay. But uh, you know, the, this is it would have to be called like grim. It's grim. It was a, it, these stories are, are, are pretty dark, but they were all really good and fun, and almost all the time it made sense. We didn't take crazy liberties. Yeah, I hope we go back to this cartoon. Oh yeah, it'll definitely be up in the pole again sometime. It looked beautiful. Um, I think the reason this failed was because it was really smart. And then, like, they, they would try to, like, buy back how smart it was and, like, nerf it down to a level that children or whatever could understand. And then, alternately, like, just they were, they were spending a lot of money or a lot of time on every scene. It all looked really good. The animation was really good. It was as good as the final segment of Heavy Metal, like, sustained throughout the series. Yeah, a lot of cartoons in that era had the same problem. Very high quality, but toy sales weren't there. And you had complete and total brand confusion. Yeah, 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, at this point, they've, they've confused the shit out of everybody. There's a franchise of movies unrelated to the TV show, unrelated to this TV show, and everyone's trying to sell merchandise at the same time. And so what happens is no one sells any merchandise because nothing looks right to anyone. And I think I saw all of one person with a Highlander t-shirt in the 90s. Yeah. Hmm. Couldn't find them. Shows like that were almost completely dependent on merchandising, primarily toy sales. And the lead part of the franchise pulling it through. I guess what uh, I'd have to say is... Highlander, the series was running down during the time this came to an end. You're getting to season five, season six of the Adrian Paul show. And... Gearing up for Raven. Yeah, that was, I think, two years are... after this one ended. But then you also had Highlander 2 which was before this. That's 1991. Did it get worse than Highlander 90. 2? Highlander 3 is much worse than Highlander 2. That's wow, much. Sorcerer. Oh, God. You know what? I th- at least we threw out most of those when we tried to make another movie. I did, Highlander has to be started over again and like without regard for the other continuity. Uh, yeah. I think that it, this is the one and only case where I'll say go ahead and reboot it. But then yeah. you, you could still put Lamb Bear in there. I think three, two or three movies that were based on Adrian Paul's show. <sighs> none of the, the first one at least had a theatrical run. Right. That's the one where they work in uh, Christopher Lamb Bear. Yeah. Is it called? It's something like Highlander Legacy or close to that. It, it has a right. It's got a it's unifying Highlander. sort of title. Uh, yeah. Okay. And we had had a couple of dead end Highlander movies, like I said, the Mario Van Peebles one. Yeah, they also, I think, the only other one I remember based off of the series was Highlander: The Source. Which was really god awful. They tried to and explain there... all the immortal stuff by oh, it's planets aligning and they get this power and they're drawn to this one area and the prize is actually they get to have a kid. It, right, it, Highlander one, like it was like you got just enough. Like there are people born sometimes who are different. They're, they're like they're not wholly unrelated to us, you know, but they're like slightly like like they're the Jack Russell Terrier of like humans or whatever, like the, the, the like perfectly like a, the smartest and the bravest, right? And they just some of them are going to be dicks if they get the prize, and some of them are going to be okay to get the prize. And like they're like salmon, they're drawn to New York. Yeah, that's that's time. what Ramirez tells him. It's like in a new land, because the time frame for t- for the first part of the story, they say, like they made the, in the movie that one. They're really, really specific in the very opening scene. He's like, in this, the year of our Lord, thirteen fifty three, or whatever it might have been. It's it's like well before Columbus, like yeah, two lifetimes. Uh... The uh, Connor McLeod was fourteen forties, I believe, is when he was born. So no, Con- Connor McLeod. They say thirteen fifty when they're going to battle. So it's fourteenth okay, century, though. Uh, That's that would be the fourteenth century. Because he's like a. Roughly 50 to 100 years older than uh, Adrian Paul's character. I don't know offhand. That much? In that, that much I do remember. Time frame. Right. He had Adrian Paul's character had heard of Connor McLeod when whatever happened to him happened to him. And they're like, there was another like you. We drove him off. Like there's something yeah. like that going on there. Is supposed, is, uh, supposed to be from... Uh, his grandfather's time. Right. Um, which Connor McLeod was from the grandfather of the Adrian Paul, uh, Duncan McLeod time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And which really doesn't matter. So you're, they're the same age in Highlander years. But yeah, so like then Duncan McLeod, Dunk, uh, Connor McLeod would be, is thir- would be born because he's about 30 when he gets killed for the first time. He's born like 1320. So he's uh, however old that, that would make him in 1985. Connor McLeod was born in 1518, Scotland near the shores of Loch Shear. In 1536 is when he was killed in battle. Oh, For whatever reason, I believe that. Ben McLeod fights Clan Fraser. Yeah, that's when. Uh, that's when. He so how come? Him. Wait. So how come they don't know about America fifty years after it's discovered? That's a mistake. That is. It's a mistake, bro. No. They're um, seafaring It wasn't peoples. wide knowledge. It's a long, yeah, long, Scottish, long so. time later. 1492 to 1536. Plus however long it takes for Ramirez to find him. Right? So 1550. I don't know how long Uh, he's wandering around. He finds him in the battlefield the next day. Ramirez? No, Ramirez runs into him uh, after he's found that... uh, after he's found that weird place and he's taken up living with, uh, with, with Heather in like... Like a like a the the rump of a cat like the last tower of a castle or something that's left. He just kind of rides up. Remember? That's how you found him in the aftermath of a battle. In or the aftermath may have been of the battle, he found kid- that may have been when uh, Connor found Duncan. That makes a lot more sense because what happens is in Highlander one, uh, uh, Connor McLeod, uh, Christopher Lambeer's character, is uh, it goes into battle and no one will fight him because uh, the the Kurgan has res- reserved him for himself. He's not quite thirty; he's like twenty five. But like, he manages to get killed, but not totally killed by the Kurgan who. Gives him like uh, a, an incapacitating wound, and he's getting ready for the final stroke, and uh, he just gets like swarmed by other people from the from the from Clan McLeod, and he just like whatever. He, while he's fending them off, they remove Connor, and when and they're like, ah, you know, he won't last. He 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 won't survive. And they're like, they give him the last rites, and they're like, his woman's crying, and they're like, they're drinking some beer, and he walks in, and he's like, what's going on, guys? And they're like, what the fuck? And then the next scene, you see them him with an ox yoke, and they're driving him out. I mean, they have a conversation first, but they're like, you know, you should yeah. have died. And they're like, last night at the death at death's door, and yet here you stand. Because he's fine. And I guess he doesn't realize that you can heal from a mortal wound in one day, or he doesn't realize how much time has passed. It doesn't, it's not really clear. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely watched co- more of the series than any of the movies. Movie one is really, really good. I watch it a few times every year. I really love it. I love everything about it. Sorry to me. Yeah, I can even forgive the uh, lead actress for only being okay. They had like few really good actors, and then everyone else is a soap opera actor. And it, it's some of them raise their game, and some of them just can't. Yeah, definitely something to rewatch. Pretty soon. The end of it. The, the movie's really good. It has a really good ending. Uh, it should have just stood alone. the The idea of sequels is only nominally known. And I think what happened was before the movie became popular in America on video, which is where it really did well. Because I don't know if it had a theatrical run. Maybe it did. I saw it on home video about a year after it came out. After it got popular in America is when all this stuff starts happening in, with, with, the, with the franchise. But I think they had already leased out the idea to someone else who did that Highlander 2 movie that seems unrelated. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. comport with anything else. And it's just its own completely insane bad story it wouldn't have been a good story even on its own 
yeah, I I never saw the original in theaters. I think I was like two at two at the time. If it ran it, in America, it came out in ninety six, like right? Yeah, I think it came out in Europe in '85. I'm not positive. I saw that as like you know a kid, and uh, I don't remember it having been in theaters. Someone had a fucking VHS tape of it, and I watched it on a cathode ray TV. You know, like that's we're talking several steps in technology into the past. Yeah, but I do remember watching the series, and that that's what first introduced me to the Highlander franchise. Dick successfully cloned, but didn't like badly clone the character. They gave him just enough characteristics of the first Highlander. There was a lot of respect towards the Highlander movie and they just ignored movie two. They got somehow lucky with that Raven shit. Or they 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 just that, that I guess Raven was a bridge to... too far. Yeah it was a bridge too far. Yeah. They, yeah, they, you know what it was, was already, is already done. They they <laughs> wanted to see how popular the Amanda character was, or or what do you call it? They they had ideas, and Adrian Paul had you know decided, you know what? I'm like in demand as a model uh, at the height of my career, and right now people might want to use me for like American series TV or movies, and there are one or two, uh, and Adrian Paul was fairly popular. And decent actor, so I guess that could have made them have to take a year off, change stuff to fit Raven, and then come back with the Raven show, which was sort of an extension of Highlander. And it really did like they they just took like a lot of people from Highlander. They didn't they they didn't change her world much at all. They just, he he wasn't around. Yeah. That's the only difference. I think we yeah, see it, once. it takes it takes place in the same universe. It's just Duncan isn't there. now. Yeah, now she's on her own doing her own Highlander thing. Yeah, but, but then uh, is Outland, they did feature is, they featured her several times in the uh, last few seasons, and those were pretty popular episodes. So they thought they may have had something. So I haven't seen it. To see what they had, what they could have done. I haven't seen this show, but is Outlander related to it? Because it sounds the same, and they're time travelers of some kind. I don't believe so, but. Uh, I don't really know Outlander that well. I don't know much about it either. It's hard to catch, but I've seen like two minute long commercials for it where they've set up stuff like the same two people are at like the crash of the Hindenburg and like the launch of like the Apollo rockets. So like they seem to be time travelers. Uh, that seems vaguely familiar, but I don't think that's related at all. And Hey, fifth Dan, uh, we, we, I finished with that. the episodes. Uh, we're just having a little uh, wrap up discussion now. Yeah, it's always great when I get to chill out with my pal Germ and got to finally hear Commodore Jim's voice. How, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. Just trying to get my stuff done. No, how I know how you feel. I just got yeah. my hands on editing software and I'm doing some stuff with that for the first time ever. Every time when you so. want to do something, something always pops up. Well, which TV show are you talking about? Um, the first movie is the only canonical thing that seems to unite everything. The first movie, like, like the, the thing with Highlander is the second movie is immediately Dark Fate, if you want to compare it to Terminator. Like, it's just yeah. like you go from movie one, which is like of a very high quality and really good, to Dark Fate, like, way too quick just it's it's, it's yeah. highlander dark fate right away second and then, third movie do not happen in the series they can't they, and they couldn't rewind it enough to fix it in movie three it was just like they again what i think happened was a b-level european uh sequel was released before this movie got popular in america and so what happened was rather than make a proper sequel to the first movie they released their B movie sequel. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. Highlander yeah. one is a B movie with the budget used well. Highlander two is a B movie that's just garbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Highlander two and Highlander three are both just offshoots. They don't exist in each other's world. 
Thank God. I mean, Highlander 2, The Quickening, uh, when, when we walked out of the theater, my friend said, there can be only one, and I said, Highlander 2, The Sickening. Yeah. It, it's fun if you're just flipping through on a boring weekend, but uh, it's not something you want to spend money for. It's just not worth the uh, price of admission, which I, I guess I was like, they took my $8, you know, it was that long ago. But um, yeah, it wasn't worth the price of admission for like one decent wink from Sean Connery and one like <laughs> from uh, Connor McLeod, you know, because that's Christopher Lambert's like big thing. It's just his, his kind of semi-insane laugh and his look of intensity. Yeah. Which he, yeah, he that's, that's like Raiden's only trait. It's that laugh. Yeah. But it's, it's yeah, a good, he, it's a good evil laugh. He basically wouldn't have done the role if he could have done that laugh and the look. Uh, his look of insanity was really strong. He does a good look of insanity. If you think about it, he's a physical actor. Look at like his other role, Tarzan. Like people yeah. like that Tarzan movie. Hey, he also did the Fortress movies. I think there was right. Two or he three was in the those. first one at least. He He's made his money. Day. Only one of them gets out in America that I remember. I remember Fortress. Uh, Fortress was pretty big. Uh, Fortress Two, I believe, was a direct to television. May have been Sci Fi Channel. Lambeer is just sort of like a man without a country because he literally has no country. Like he just, he's not really American. He's not really English and he's not really French while being all three at the same time. It's just like his career goes, I guess, further in Europe, but it, I mean, it's not like he's without success in America. It's just, it's, it's pretty specific to like those two franchises. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I guess to a whole generation, like when I sh when I talked about it with Appian, he was like, I, I love them as Raiden, man. He'll always be Raiden to me. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, that movie was awesome as when I saw it as a kid. So to a lot of people, wow. that was a significant role. And that Appian's is a very dummy. unpopular opinion that I know the second one is generally shed upon, but that first one was not too much better. He said the movie was bad. He just said he loved him, and he like he said like the he saw it like a magic age to see movies, right? He was like because Appian's only like thirty five or thirty four or some shit like that. So think about it when that movie came out. He saw it when he was like six or seven. So like he just he thought it was the greatest thing ever because he was a little kid and like he just has good memory. Like say so he, he sentimentally likes the movie. He he under he gets the deal. Yeah. But I get well, what I'm saying is I I that movie was actually that movie was pretty big, and the other controversy about that movie was people were talking about it like they're talking about AI and CGI now like it's going to take jobs away. They're like we can't make video games into movies that will destroy the movie industry. So what you guys do if you have a immortal life for a extremely long lifespan, seven hundred years? I might get more stuff done. <laughs> I'm training yeah. all the time to win that prize. <laughs> yeah, it takes 700 years for me to actually get around to doing stuff like recorded content. Yeah, yeah my bathroom would still be a mess, but like, uh, I would probably be really good with like a sword. Yeah, I gotta run, guys. You guys have a great day. Take care of yourself. It's great to see you, Colorado yeah. Jim. Bye bye. Thanks, Stopping by, Jim. If I had an immortal life, you know what? Like, I'd probably be, and, and like you're frozen at like thirty, right? Unless you're, I I don't know what the rules are there. Do, do, do you slowly age a little bit because Ramirez was so incredibly old? What was he? Forty three hundred years old? Something like that. It was insane how old he was. He's like, ah, the Bible, gosh. Before that, we only threw chicken bones in the air. You know, it was like absolutely crazy how old he was. And um, 
So maybe you age just a little you, bit to the eye of a mortal, uh, or do you freeze at the you age you're freeze. first killed? You freeze you, at the age you you're supposed, killed at. Yeah, in theory, you freeze at the age you're killed at because they do feature children, child immortals in the series. And well, one of them right, is okay. 800 years old, and he is still like 12 years old. That would so suck. Yeah. That would so, uh, but that is a bleed over from Anne Rice. Just a little That's bit Anne Rice fucked idea. up by it. Yeah, I can imagine. That was a good idea to go with that. Um, you know what? That's Kirsten Dunst in uh, Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. She's like, what? Like a 400-year-old, 12-year-old. Yeah. That movie it's is not a, creepy when you think about it now. It's not a regular character. I believe that particular one's in two, three episodes. He's an interesting and awesome character, but you don't want to see too much of him because he really is like he'll suffer from Boba Fettism, right? Boba Fett was really cool and really interesting till he showed up on The Mandalorian. Then he was still cool. Then he got his own show, and he was neither interesting nor cool after the third or fourth episode. His reputation went down like a bantha. Yeah. Well, kind of like um, your cool uncle who stops by every once in a while. Then you have to spend like a couple weeks with him, and you see how he lives every day. Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> You know, I just had a thought. I would learn how to play every instrument and and do audio recording, and I would do a complete solo album. Yeah, that's something to do. Phil Collins pulled it off, and without being an immortal, I mean, why can't I? So yeah, yeah but, I uh, I. Go ahead. If you haven't seen uh, Highland, the series with Adrian Paul, it's definitely a good watch if you like the first movie. Every time I see it, I like it. I've seen, there's what, something like 100 episodes because it, it was pretty successful. There's about 100 episodes. I've seen about 20. Something like that. I've seen like yeah, 20 episodes. I, have a, I got a working familiar. There might be as many as 120 episodes or 180, depending upon the length of their seasons. But that again, European show. Uh, although I think there was there, they populated some of the cast with Americans. Was Raven an American girl? Uh, I have no idea. His well, that was uh, always his main sidekick. Richie is an American kid. I forget what his name is. I remember I, the character. It, it was a good show. It really was. It was a good show. I agree. And it deserved to get a movie, whether or not that movie got as far as it needed to go or was as good as it needed to be. I have a hard time saying. It's just it's hard to say. Like, the movie was yeah. mid. It, it's a good wrap-up. It was very respectful. It just, I guess, when you make such a great first movie, you know what I mean, that's so complete, um, with no mind paid to the idea that you would ever have a sequel, like you just you're kind of fucked for ideas, and you just end up making accidental, accidental Last Jedi's over and over. Yeah, the so, most damage to them what it, came it, from with themselves. The, with that, is you just have watch the first, watch the series, and jump to Highlander in the game. Ignore Highlander Two and Highlander Three. Does is Highlander Endgame the one with the crate with the bad scene with Heather though, where you kind of have to laugh because she looks fantastic and he and and my, Christopher Lambert looks you know fifty seven. He's just like, and she's like, and she's like, what she's gone from like twenty five to forty five, looking great, but he's gone from like whatever it is, like thirty seven to fifty seven, and he's just like, and she, and she's like. While he did look really young when they did the first movie, like he looks every minute of his age and like he's wearing a scarf to cover like old man throat, which, you know, it happens, you know, yeah, to men and women years later. She OK, he whatever just does not age as well as she does. She looks great. She didn't. She's not in it. And they I'm not sure if it's the same actress, but they have a. They have a different Heather actress. There was, 
she she's killed off in the first five minutes. That's why he's in the sanctuary in that movie. I didn't. I, I this was remember the days where we all had cable and HBO and shit like that. I caught. I kept catching that movie from the middle, and I'm like, I have enough interest that I really want to see this movie from start to finish. So I saw like scenes here and there out of context, but never watched the whole thing through. But I did see the weird scene where it was just like she was talking about him not aging, and then like which which made you look at him like more critically, and you're like, whoa, he really did age. That I believe is Highlander two. I don't Highlander two. He, he doesn't. She doesn't have any. She has no spoken lines in in game. It might have been in one of the. Uh, it, maybe it's three. Then I'm gonna guess three because in Highlander two we get lost down a kooky rabbit hole. Uh, it's all in New York when it's not on another planet. Uh, Ramirez like comes back from the dead. How don't know. It's just he's just there. Yeah, they really didn't explain that too well. You don't know. Thankfully, probably for the best, because you don't want any ex weird explanation for pretty much anything in that movie. Because what they do explain they had to is throw so it out the window. Bad. Right? Yeah, yeah. It was painful to sit through the movie. It was insulting to sit through the movie. And I got to say, um, that was like the worst year of going to the movies uh, till like this year. Because I think it was just like I saw in the space of two months, I saw uh, Fire Walk With Me. Holy shit. I mean, that wasn't painful to watch, but it was just a confusing and mind-bending, somewhat annoying experience with no fulfillment. You know, there was absolutely no storiness to Fire Walk With Me. And then I saw Aliens 3, where the first five minutes, you never get over how stupid it is that you're, and how dumb of a choice it is that you just end up resenting the movie for the whole movie and you never come to terms with what's going on. And that movie may not be any good. Oh, and then, no good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, yeah, it was just a run of terrible movies until Tombstone. And then the, the, that Highlander movie, and then Tombstone. Uh, finally, like Tombstone, I was like, huh. Oh, Ooh, people can still make movies. What the hell just what the hell just happened to me? Nothing's as bad as Spawn, but it was bad. Yeah, but Spawn was a few years later. Which is another reason why it just shouldn't have been as bad. That's there was one terrible decision after another after another after another. Everything about Spawn is bad. Yeah, it should have been closer to what the HBO series was. It's crazy lost, absolutely lost. It had no identity. It had no way to go. The part where the toy fights another toy is terrible. And I just I don't understand what they were trying to do. Uh, there was no storiness to their story. And again. Yeah, they, they're banking on the fact that not too many people were familiar with Spawn. The, well, the other thing is... Todd McFarlane never had a lot of storiness to his story. His Spider-Man comics were beautifully illustrated and had pages and pages of uh, like show don't tell sort of story with editor's notes and not like tons and tons of dialogue. And uh, I don't know if he ever gets control of the story. Don't remember. Yeah. Oh, you don't redcon anything for the second. It just that didn't happen. Forget it. They had, no, they had to throw number three as well. Sis, uh, sci -fi. Highlander 1, Highlander the series, Highlander Endgame, um, and then we're done. Or, yeah, something might happen next. We don't know. Yeah, the, the, that could be a new Highlander. The Henry Cavill one, they better fucking get going with that because Henry's like 40. Like, is he going to be Ramirez if they don't do it? And they, they have like less than five years before he has to be Ramirez. At this I point, it should be Tom Holland fans. and Henry Cavill. I hate to say it. I'm not a Tom Holland fan, but Tom Holland should be fucking the Highlander and Henry Cavill should be Ramirez. No, no, he can... As long as he stays in shape and they get the... At the very least, no gray hair on him. But he, he can play a version no... of the Highlander. 
But he, he doesn't can have to be never Connor be in a sequel. He can be, he can be something else. You, you, you can never have a sequel. There's not enough time. It doesn't need a sequel. There'll be one anyway. We know. We, I don't know if you can get anything made without franchise implications. Anyway, you, you're gonna have him hand off the torch in movie one. Yeah, does that have a introduce another immortal and make an anthology type what, series? So again, I would say Henry Cavill is maybe a better fit for Ramirez even right now. But that's that's me. You know, I I don't have to be right. Just kind of clanging around in my mind because this Henry Henry Cavill Highlander has been something we've heard about for about three years, if not more. Uh, a good, at least five years now. Yeah, I want to. So I'm just saying, like Henry Cavill has aged significant, not significantly. I'm just saying, like he's gone from a young guy to like you know he's getting close to forty now, which is still not an old guy, but. You know, the, there's going to be physical differences in his appearance, and it's going to start getting closer together. You know, no matter what. That's just that's that's how life works. Oh yeah, Henry Cavill is almost 41. Right. So there's no there's absolutely no potential for uh, a sequel. He'll be 44 by the time you get a sequel if the movie drops today. So what we're talking about if they start making this today, we're talking a 44 year old Henry. Right, yeah, because he's 41 already. Kept, I'm talking about like there is no sequel potential. 51 year old immortal. Is he gonna look great in 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 um nine years when he's 50? You know what I mean? Two, which is two movies from now, maybe yeah. three. I just thought I think he needs to be Ramirez already. But you know that's like I said, that's just me. Who knows? It it makes sense. So it's sort of logical. Yeah, I'd like to see not a straight remake of it. Just make him immortal, make him a McLeod. You can even reference Duncan and Connor to it. But it would help any now. If you take that approach and you reference them, that would be fine. And if you close the door on them being alive, that would be fine. Or that, or there were just you know gone away to like a different place or something. I don't you, you yeah. don't even have to get into them. But uh, yeah, if you, you tipped your hat to them, it's cool. Yeah. You can just give them a the little tip of the hat. Have Highlander in game happen the way it does. Connor's gone and you can write something better a better end for Duncan other than the source, which makes no damn sense. Well, he got sourced in. Maybe he can get resourced out. Maybe it's like the Nexus. We can undo it. And he just, oh, boy, he uh, steps in in a blaze of light into the present. Yeah, the Highlander of the Source ends with him becoming mortal and having children with his ex wife. Yeah, that's a good ending for him, but right, you're right. It's time to make a new Highlander franchise, and there's a Duncan and a Connor McLeod out there who we talk about a little bit, but not obsess yeah. on. We can't. But yeah, we yeah, don't need to go um, into detail about what happened to them. But they existed, but they are they lost their heads some time ago. We, or, or we just lost track of them. You know what I mean? We don't have to. It, it's, it's, not, it's very unimportant. Like It has to have an identity of its own. Do you need to have the Yoda type mentor to make it Highlander? I really feel you do. I don't think uh, it's yeah, Highlander without a mentor. You can at least refer back to him. I. What do you mean? Like you? Could, uh. Well, the first one sort to of. Be, oh, yeah, doesn't have to be as prominent a role as Sean Connery's was, but uh, still have him in there. Like yeah, feature him in a cup, a couple of flashbacks. I think the entire Sean Connery segment was filmed in like a week or two weeks or something and is uh, is only like 24 minutes long or something like that. They managed to bloat it out to seem like like 40 minutes maybe because what happens is we keep fly that Highlander 1 starts in 1985. You know what I mean? He's at a wrestling, yeah. wrestling match at Madison Square Garden and it looks like he's at the real garden. That part might have been the only filming in New York, aside from the Silver Cup rooftop scene. Uh, not likely, because it features the fabulous Freebirds. That 
more likely be down somewhere in Atlanta. Wait, oh, you recognize the wrestlers? Yeah, the they're the main ones in there are the fabulous Freebirds. Cool, I they, didn't know they that. They were not right. popular. They were not really liked in the up uh, uh, northeast. Maybe they were heels here. You know what I mean? You still need that. It's yeah. a good payday. They, they were big enough to come to the garden. I don't know. You know what? It's a generic 80s arena. And the, the way the signs and the scoreboards and stuff like that was, it's like it could have been in England. I'm just it looked enough like the garden. I think it was. It could have been real. The point of view shots looking down, I think, are definitely from the garden, but that's from some other event when people are too small to be seen. Uh, but, but and then when we see Connor, he I guess he could be anywhere because he's just he's doing that Christopher Lambier crazy look. And then he takes out a Spanish Highlander in the parking garage, but that could be a parking garage anywhere. Just needed to fill it with American cars, which they did. Yeah. Let's see. You uh, may hate this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hate this uh, shot by shot reboot or take ideas from the second one. Well, definitely don't take ideas from the second don't. one. Don't. 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 Oh. He made a giant pair of sunglasses and wrapped them around the world. That was his genius idea. That's um, that's very viable. And what you have yeah. there is, in this cartoon, we just saw that the good guy immortals have like a brotherhood, a fraternity. If we could just strengthen that a little more and have it be like when when someone finds our point of view Highlander, for lack of a better term, the new McLeod, he's going to be like, shut up, I should have taken an oath. You know what I mean? It's like, a rising tide raises all ships, Highlander. When we find one of our own, we train him, teach him to be benevolent. This way, when we do fight, it'll be with honor. You know, and it's something like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that, although that one day I intend to take your hand. Really promising. I, although I one day I hope to take your head. It serves the greater good of all. If the winner is good, so I'll develop you into a good person. If you kill me, so be it. Maybe someone else gets me first. It's just, that's the, the good guy immortals are just like, they, they're the most benevolent because they're like, maybe I get the prize, maybe I don't. I just, I care enough about people to like find and unmess up other immortals. Because just finding out you're an immortal would have been enough if, if Duncan McLeod hadn't found that chick, he might have turned himself into the uh, Kurgan as well. He was ready to be evil. Yeah. They they, they gave him enough of, an, of, of motivation. Of, they really need to get rid of the concept of the prize being something more than the power of all the immortals concentrated in one. That I don't like. Um, the the uh, omnipotent knowledge was good. Uh, I guess the source they were trying to make it into, um, you would be a human. But that yeah. was supposed to be part of the deal with the first one, right? That he got to be human and have children. Uh, the first one, he got some I... sort of like brain reading powers or empath powers or some random BS like that. He gets a reset, a recharge, and um, a, a, a second chance. Uh, he has redeemed himself fully. He's gone from a avenging angel to redeemed avenging angel, right? And, and like he saved all the humans from because if the Kurgan gets the prize, he subjugates all mankind. So, like, you know, the assumption is Christopher Lambert will, will pull like a Deckard and get into his car with Roxanne Hart and just drive away somewhere and use that omnipotence to live happily ever after and, and not have a role in anything. Yeah. So what the second is, movie does is gives us a climate crisis. Yeah, which was a little bit preachy. On top of you know what I poorly done. I don't know. I don't even know if they were trying to be preachy. It was just like, what can we do? And they're like, oh, uh, nuclear war. Oh uh, no. What about this? Uh, but climate crisis. Good. I like where you're going with that. And they're like, uh, we we can't explain it. Uh, explain it anyway. It's like, but it'll be bullshit. No, no, no. Do it. Explain it. People will like the explanation. And it was just, it was total bullshit. It was like so stupid. Um, like yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying like 
that movie's so old that we run the risk of like quote i think mexican iron man said this recently we keep the risk is seeing woke where it isn't yeah it, it came off as preachy the way they did it it was, it was here's the thing it was a, such a poorly made movie and it's in over its head like you and i would watch a movie that was about climate change we've watched Waterworld. uh yeah it's not it's not fucking preachy and it doesn't get in over its head trying to tell you how to live your goddamn life. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not very good. It's better than people say, but it's not very good. It's it's an attempt to be road warrior on the ocean. Yeah. And since then, I don't think they really need to be Christ-like to fit into the – for the prize – or anything to do well, with the immortals. They would they would have like you know you would use some of like the iconography and stuff that people have traditionally used with a Christ like figure, like you know, because he's immortal and he has like sort of this like supernatural power. You might do one or two things, but like you wouldn't want him to say be able to like charge up other people with his immortality like jumpstart dead people or anything like that nothing then, then you're like again you're in over your head you know this is like this is a time travel movie where they sat down and said the stupidest thing about time travel movies is the time travel technology so like why not travel time one minute at a time if the actor playing the villain was having fun oh yeah michael ironside he was that the that movie villain? I believe so, as Michael Ironside. And he makes it before he makes um, Total Recall, even though Total Recall's out first, is my understanding. Because, like, they just underthought and, like, snapped that second Highlander movie right out because the first one overperforms. But you have to understand, it was a different time. Movie tickets for the equivalent of, like, three bucks now like a, a soft drink the price of the of the soda was the price of you and your date going to that movie uh and uh like most movies were a little bit better no one wanted to make an embarrassingly bad movie and you were supposed to enjoy yourself for about two hours and like highlander one like it, it plays by all the rules and it was even worth going in in the, in the time and space that i'm from that this movie's from to understand what you're talking about Almost all cars, because there had only been so many years of cars that had the new system, most cars had a mono AM radio or AM FM radio with one speaker, and that's it. Tape decks are just starting to come in and shit. Like people are like, they're, co they're common by now, but only for like a couple of years. Like it takes a while. So, like the fact that a movie would have a soundtrack by Queen and you would see it in a movie theater that had like nine, 10 speakers, you know what I mean? with panning sounds and stuff like that, that was enough to get a lot of people in Europe just to go see Highlander one. And then they provided them a better movie than expected. With him being the only one, all the power and can live forever. It's meant by Christ. Like, okay. But Christ notoriously did not live forever. But some sort of all-powerful or religious figure I don't think would be a good fit for anything like that. That's why the first movie is so perfect by ending when it does and not defining what happens to him when he wins this prize. And that's why the second movie is garbage from the minute it starts because they have to spend the whole movie exploiting how he's the smartest person ever, which means you need people who are really smart to write his smart ideas and what we got was average screenwriters. So, like, he was having, like, unremarkable ideas. I guess the, the modern comparison would be Star Trek Into Darkness, where Khan is supposed to be a genius, but Khan is only as smart as J.J. Abrams. So his genius idea is to build a starship that's ten times bigger, but exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, that was a god awful movie. How are you going to make Khan English? 
you know what it is? Is you not only made him English, you made him into the Winter Soldier. That iteration of Khan is no more dangerous to them than a than a very smart Romulan, right? He's five times stronger yeah. than a human being with super intellect. The reason Khan was so dangerous was because of his origin story and because of Space Seed. He doesn't stay out of the blue. Wrath of Khan almost wouldn't work. I mean, what J.J. Abrams work. was... J.J. It, it, Abrams... In no way, shape, or form the way they did it. That movie depended on knowledge of the TV show, and that's not wrong, and that's not a problem. Because Star Trek doesn't have to play by the same rules, but it has to... It can only play by Star Trek rules. Yeah. Or you fall out of being Star Trek, and it's terrible. You can't give... Cumberbatch credit for Ricardo Montalban. You can't no. connect those two versions in any way. I feel bad for Cumberbatch in that role. To be the... Oh yeah, I feel anyone who's dumb enough to sign a contract to work with J.J. Abrams. No one knew that yet. Remember. Remember. No one, no, no one knows that yet. He's hot, young, new approach director J.J. Abrams who's amazingly successful and who's had for eight years the most popular TV show in American TV and like the the excuse under the table is like so it had one bad episode and that's an easy way to blow off the fact that like his series was uh JJ Abrams approach is always the same he makes a pilot that will get renewed and then tries to fix it and he can't because what the deal is is you you have to have your mystery box pre-solved he just makes his mystery box super intriguing as intriguing as he can until he runs out of like uh, intelligence to, to solve that mystery and then what he does is he yeah. shortcuts to a point where the mystery box just kind of gets ignored and we introduce a new mystery that he can't yeah. end it so but he, he keeps refreshing the mystery box that's why we, and, and and I would argue that since the end of Lost we have never seen a JJ pro project that ends it merely stops yeah either that or the mystery box gets solved off screen and dumbly, just jump dumbly. ahead and yo yeah that was that was a hell of a thing like with lost what, they just jumped to everyone's dead well they did the loki right they rewound the entire series to the first two minutes making the series then not happen which is the best thing you could do with loki uh and then they set in motion like a quick new chain of events Yeah, Into darkness when he that's... cracks the when the cracks started to show on J.J. Abrams, what told people he's just a second or third rate hack. I, I would argue that people who saw the first movie twice would have been afraid of a J.J. sequel because of the yeah. damage done in the like. I have had very bad disagreements with people over this, but maybe we could talk about it for one minute. Yeah, in Wrath of Khan. When they're in the Genesis cave, there's a conversation about the test that starts the movie, right? Yeah. And Captain Kirk has a completely different point of view than David and and um and what's her name? Um Kirstie Alley's character. What the hell is her name again? Um Oops. help me. Savick. Uh, he Savick. had a completely different view from Savick and David, right? But McCoy, Spock, and Kirk are of the same view. And McCoy leans in and goes, you're looking at the only Starfleet cadet to have ever passed the Kobayashi Maru test. And they're like, huh? What? What? And like we had already heard uh, from Spock, your final solution was, what shall we say, innovative, right? And uh, we never really get what happened, but he says, um, we don't get like the nuts and bolts of it, but in the Genesis cave, they say, she says, you know, it's been said you're the only cadet to pass the Kobayashi Maru test. How did you do it, Admiral? And he turns to Savick and he's like, change the conditions of the test. I don't like to lose. And David Marcus laughs and goes, he cheated. Now, David yeah. Marcus has made a Death Star weapon out of, like, super unstable matter that will cost him his own life, a movie down the road. He is a mad scientist. David uh, cheats. David has cheated in the most important game 
uh, the game of making the Genesis project. He has made a horrific weapon, which has made the, uh, the galaxy that much more unsafe. He has absolutely got no scruples. Um, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Uh, he's going to try to be redeemed by getting to know his father, was the movie's sort of uh, ideal. And then when Merrick Buttrick becomes ill, they decide that the best thing they can do is kill his character so that they can put him on a TV show and pay him because they want to give him money. They feel terrible because he's got a, a fatal illness. They try to help him. The Star Trek people were, were once really nice human beings. But that's that's yeah, why David uh, dies. Well, you can tell when he has that little laugh when he said he cheated, he's realizing he's taking after his father even though he's never met him. That is probably true because I think that they had the idea that the Genesis device needed to be unsustainable because it's too it's too stake changing. It's like the Klingons are messing around. Fire Genesis device. You know what I mean? Like you've sort of shortcut the need to have Starfleet and everything like that once you have technology that powerful. So they shouldn't bring it back ever. And they were smart to walk away from it. And the idea was just like the, the Federation is too scrupulous to have something this horrible. And they're yeah. the only ones able to make it. So that's it's cool that they do that. And they're like, we'll just find another planet, which makes, more, makes as much sense. But, uh, you know, David Marcus laughs at him and then Kirk says I uh, I changed the conditions of the test then McCoy has validated that he passed it which means you don't pass if you cheat so when he says I, and then they went after they laugh at him he goes I got a commendation for original thinking and then the communicator goes off and he's like it's been two hours Spock or well, he pulls out his communicator Spock it's been two hours that's that's how that scene plays out so we don't get resolution. So what, what happened was this. Anyone who's been to college can, knows this. If you're not happy with your grade, you can approach your teacher and ask to take the test again. You can do that in high school yeah. too, I think. All right. So, so, he, he, so this is the deal. You don't fail the Kobayashi Maru. You don't. It's a test of character, right? So they want to see if you're a bloodthirsty maniac who goes after the Klingons, right? Or if, you know, you're just too soft and, uh, you know, you, you, you tr you're trusting and you go in there and get, and, and, and you know, they want to just see how you face death, right? Are you underhanded? Yeah. Do hidden personality traits come out? It's merely to see, like, you know, you can't get it wrong. Like, you know, like, it might, I don't think there's a grade. It's just like, how do they handle it? And then they, and that just goes into your folder as like a non-grade. It's like Kobayashi Maru test solution was this it's like it's like a it's like a the, the written yeah. questions at the end of the history test, test. it's a psychological it is a psycho test. A you could fuck it up so bad that you get kicked out but yeah. it's not going to change a lot if you have a mod if you don't go into the if you don't try to rescue them at all it comes down to you justifying it later i think you have to that kind of test seems like afterwards you sit down with your professor and he's like berates you and you have to answer questions about what you did you know what i mean it's like you want to say a neutral song why you know what i mean that's what happens next but uh yeah. he he took the test and he wasn't able to save anybody and that bothers captain kirk because captain kirk doesn't like to lose and he doesn't like to lose people established all through the series when every red shirt dies he still has a reaction he's still upset and he's still if you kill one of his red shirts he's gonna try to kill you a lot of the times or he's gonna set you right like you, you you've got like another thing coming if you kill any of his people and um so it's kind of, it's it's with 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 the kobayashi maru he takes the test again and again they said he takes it several times and what happens is when he finally takes it with permission of his professors he gets everyone off the ship and he ch by changing the conditions of his of the test and that impresses his professors. He does not pass. He gets a commendation for original thinking. And according to books, the original thinking was, what if the Klingons feared and respected the Federation commander? Yeah. So he, yeah, reprogramming it. Original thinking too, but still, you get to spend a week in the brig. Uh, no, he wouldn't spend a week in a brig because remember, he was taking the test over and over with permission. 
He yeah. wanted another you grade. Take, he wanted you can another take outcome. The test over and over again, but that's part of the psychological examination. Can you deal? Not with if you the fail. Failure? You can't. You can't. You can't take it again if you fail and it washes you out. Like you do something immoral. It's like you know, destroy the Kobayashi Maru. It's more merciful. Like that's you're gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's too you. insane. If you're right. taking it over and over again and keep because you want more, a better outcome. Extreme, yeah, they'll give you a psychological discharge. The thing is, Kirk didn't get more and more extreme. He tried one logical course of action after another, which, by the way, I don't think you get to take it more than twice, even if you're good. The thing is this, Captain Kirk was the highest uh, academic in his class and the highest academic in Starfleet from the moment he goes till the moment he leaves covering whatever it might be. If it's a four-year school, say seven, eight, seven years worth of people, he is by far the smartest. He has the highest A in every class. They say it in um, the first episode that was supposed to be the pilot, episode four, um, um, where no man has gone before. Gary Mitchell says a stack of books with legs. So Kirk, Kirk was like a total nerd academic at, at, at uh, Starfleet Academy. He really deeply and truly wants to be a Starfleet captain. That's all he wants. He's a very driven person. Yeah. So they're like, when, when the person who's set academic records at your military academy that's like 100 years old, records like, we're talking like James T. Kirk, if he lived in our world, it's like, he has higher. He had a higher score on the tactical than George Patton, and a higher score on the organizational than than Eisenhower. And everyone looks around and they're like, he had a higher score on leadership than Robert E. Lee, and a higher score for successful outcomes than um, than MacArthur. And everyone looks around again. He's like, he wants a fourth crack at Kobayashi Maru. And the commandant of Starfleet Academy is just like, hell, let them blow up the simulator again. I, want, I, I for one, want to see what this exceptional student does. And then um, next order of business. That's because Admiral Kirk, Captain Kirk, Cadet Kirk was that different. He's probably one of the only ones to ask to take it again, too. Yeah, yeah. This is an in-world explanation, guys. This is not headcanon. I might be wrong, but my in-world to justify what happened based on only Wrath of Khan, uh, I, I, I refer to uh, a really good Star Trek novel called Kobayashi Maru. I believe Shatner wrote or co-wrote it, but it's read by James Doohan. And what happens is they, they crash a shuttle on some planet. And uh, while they're waiting to try to save themselves or die, everyone recounts having taken the Kobayashi Maru. So Scotty tells his story. He deadlocked it. Scotty deadlocked the Kobayashi Maru. I remember he that couldn't. novel. It was really good. It's not, of course, canonical by word of Gene Roddenberry. However, it's totally inoffensive to everything else. And now that we've got terrible new Trek, it's canonical enough for me. It explains everything really well. But the movie gives you more than enough to go on. Jim James Kirk did not hack the computers and eat an apple. And by the way, that is totally antithetical to Starfleet, that you would cheat your way to being captain without one day in the field as a officer. And that's just the story of J.J. Abrams. He cannibalizes the middle and end of his story to make the beginning pop. By the middle, the story's falling apart, so he has to hit the gas by the end, he has to turn on a nitrous injector. He either jumps to General Lee across the creek or he doesn't. We saw it work a few times. Every time the car comes down, you see parts flying off the back. You know it didn't really work. But Rise of Skywalker, he doesn't make it across the creek. It, it crashes it to the edge of the far embankment. Let's see here. I, the Kobayashi Maru Star Trek novel written by Julia Eklar. Okay, read by either James Dewan or Walter Koenig, right? Although that uh, might not be there. They don't give any information on the audiobook version. All right, so that's but, uh, another non-author yeah, William James Shatner Duhan not and, involved. Uh, a lot of them did do a lot of the audiobooks. 
they needed money and the books were i will say this the audio books they ain't canon but almost all of them are high quality i've never read one that sucked have you i've read a few star trek novels not a million but a few i thought everyone i read was pretty good spock's world was really good yeah a lot of them are really high up there so are motion picture is really uh, good star wars novels except those were canonical yes until a certain nazi mouse took over fucking mouse um i think he made them optional canonical himself when he did the prequels because he's like i uh may may contradict a few things from the books there are uh, asterisks for the moment i'll uh i'll deal with it as i go along like i i think that was the last thing we got from the real man uh, the real master of star wars yeah but uh none of the there's not really heavy uh contradictions when he came out with the prequels um, he was very good at keeping things the way uh, that they were uh, spoken, even if it was to the detriment of the story. The one mistake would be that I would say everyone would probably agree on is just start out with Hayden Christensen the whole time. Yeah, don't need a young kid. Yeah, uh, that didn't work. Um, and And that's why I always say George Lucas... If you want to see his techniques done like badly, watch a Roland Emmerich movie. They're exactly the same guy, except George Lucas has like 60% more talent. At least. But the stories are always like the, the weaknesses are the same dialogue. The uh, mistakes are the same overuse of child actors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he, he's a director, not a script writer. He really he should uses have different else. script writers. He should have some be completely detached. Here's the outline. Write the script for me. I don't think he wrote Independence Day. I think he wrote that goddamn terrible sequel. By the way, you uh, check out your uh, your tip jar. I wanted to thank you. That damn thing should Nothing. have gave me a. Nothing to write home about, but it should get you at least a cup. Maybe not at Starbucks, but it'll get you a cup of coffee. I want to thank you. And everyone, you know, the, there is a tip jar for germ. Just uh, cut and paste the link, and it'll get you right there. Uh, it's anonymous enough. Yeah. And uh, you know, germ's uh, not going to go tell anybody. The, thanks for the tip. You, you're, you're, you're a pal. I really like hanging out with you, and I think that the things that you do for the community with uh, the, 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 the hangouts and the open forums, as well as stuff like these gifts of wonderful cartoons are like definitely you know altruistic, and everyone should hit the like and follow button. Thank you. And oh, we should come on Saving Star Trek soon. We, we miss you. Uh, yeah, I'll try to squeeze you in between work and everything else. That's the spirit. What are you doing for St. Patrick's Day? I'm going to try to remain sober and act normal. Uh, probably nothing. You know what? Nothing is better than going out and disgracing the race by drinking in the name of the Irish. I'm uh, Irish enough to say it. You don't drink? Okay, cool. I do drink, and but I, I just, am try not to get trashed. Very Irish. Are you? Yeah, I get drunk once or twice. Once or twice, uh, like say, let's say like ten or twelve times a year by mistake. But I drink. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm also yeah. very diabetic, so that stuff does not work well with me. Was not aware. Sorry, bro. That's a drag. Yeah, if I drink, it's sort of like how that Paul Blart mall cop. Is a uh, little mishap in the restaurant. I didn't see that movie, but um, my friend has it and drinks like booze and gets like drunk. And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I mean, he's already had a couple of complications, like maybe the drinking, you know, and he's like, not really listening. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're being smarter about it. But yeah, that does suck. Now. Right. Yeah, okay, no, cool. Been long enough you live, that you it's learn. just integrated in. You live, you learn. 
thank God you lived long enough to learn. Everybody should be, everybody be careful with yourselves, will you? Where's me pot of gold? That's, you know what? That's the, in the about, cereal aisle right next to the cornflakes. What do I do today? Uh, if I, when I go on, but if I hit pop culture minefield and I probably will, um, do I do their movie or do I do something themed to St. Patrick's day? If, if I do a watch party later. Oh, right. Cause if I reshow right. the movie they're showing, they're showing dread, uh, 2012. That'll get an audience. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Well, what would you do He's... for a St. Patrick's thing, though? The only things that jump out to me are those leprechaun movies, and those are best How left about unremembered. Star Trek Space Irish from TNG, Up the Long Ladder, yeah, and um, and Leprechaun 2, Leprechaun in Space. Oh, yeah, but Back to the Hood. Leprechaun 2, Back to the Hood. Where leprechaun smokes weed, and and it's 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 not even like it's closer to scary movie than it is to leprechaun. That would be my St. Patrick's Day uh, arc, because yeah, I can't think of a like. What do you? We'll be showing the crying game for St. Patrick's. You know, it's like what do you do? Yeah, I guess I can show. Go ahead. I can't really think of a lot of St. Patrick's themed stuff. The only thing you could say is go with an actor who's Irish. So any Richard Harris movie, right? Any yeah. Daniel Day Lewis movie, right? Gangs in hey, New York. Get a Liam Neeson movie. You know what? He's in Gangs in New York. Yeah. Um, you know what? Gangs in New York might be the most, and it's mo it, that's appropriate. We're Americans. They, they, I, I'm sure they celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Ireland, but we're Americans. We celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day somewhat differently. And we, we're, we invented that parade, so maybe it should take place in America. Maybe, maybe gangs in New York. But I don't yeah, love that movie. Better. I don't love that movie, but it's 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 very watchable. It's long as fuck. It's, it's not a great movie. No, it's not. But frankly, the Outside of Liam Neeson, the cast is kind of weak. Uh, Leonardo is young, underdeveloped, and does a terrible New York accent and a terrible Irish accent to the point where we have a shoehorned in line that is obviously later where he says, because I moved back to Ireland and then back to New York, I have a very strange accent. And Cameron Diaz is just not... She reaches that level of ability later, but she's not Scorsese ready. It's also not Scorsese's greatest story. It's not bad. This is, you, you, you know, the most emotional. You know what the most emotional moment where I felt the most was in, um, in, in, in that movie, in Gangs of New York? When they uh, show where they're... No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gus. I, don't know I tried I... to watch that movie once. I felt yeah, it, it, it's cumbersome. It's com the middle's cumbersome. And the action scenes don't go off all that well because they're doing a lot of good exposition, but the the exposition is good, but the actors aren't great, like you said. It's just Scorsese doesn't fuck up. It's a more po like and Daniel Day Lewis is being iconic through the whole movie. He's iconic, but it's trying to do too much. The most emotional part of Gangs of New York, believe it or not, is after the movie's story ends and they show where they're laid to rest on a hill in Queens that I am familiar with, that 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 he is trying to show us that that is where he likes to hang out and that is where he's from. He's showing us the point of view of New York City from where he grew up. It's Astoria Park. It's Rainy Park. You see Roosevelt Island. The most emotional part was seeing the city grow, then grow to have the towers, and then to have the towers disappear. That got me. And then the credits rolled. So that would tell you. Right? The visual. It had the, Leonardo DiCaprio's not in the movie. No one's there's no actors in the scene. 
It's all done through effect. It's show, don't tell. But to show the city go from 1850 to whatever year that movie comes out, 2006. So it goes, uh, it's like maybe 15 seconds per decade. And it's just like it, the city builds itself up. It towers appear and then they're just gone and it's it's fucked up yeah i can see how that would affect a new yorker it would it, he that scene was only for people in new york and it really really was effective the only movies that address 9 11 that are successful are movies that don't talk about it or don't go to the place where it happened zero dark 30 Star Trek the Zindi Arc of Enterprise. It's about 9-11, but they don't do it. Anyone who goes there ruins their movie because you just you, no one wants to ever see it. Everyone has to die who is alive when they saw it before you can make that movie and not get absolutely burned at the stake. But you can sort of be a little bit lighthearted about it. It's not the end of the world anymore, 25 years later. You know, I saw it, it was very sad. I had friends who died, but I'm not going to punch people in the face 25 years later for snarking a little or whatever. Even I've made a couple of jokes about it at this point. Yeah. But that was the most effective part of the movie. Oh, every New Yorker says 9-11. I lost 19 friends that day, and everyone like looks and smiles, you know, because that's... You, you get it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then we talk about how we should the response should have been nuclear, but that's a whole different story because I don't want to ruin the, the image of the soft liberal New Yorker. But we were absolutely ready to nuke that entire country several times, and, and we several should've. countries. You know, we should have. And if they do it again, just launch. But that's me. If you attack America, you should be attacked back with nuclear weapons. Fuck you. And fuck the people who did that. But hey, that's Gangs of New York was, uh, man, that's another one. It's like, what is it, three hours? It should have been like two. At two hours, it would have gone up a whole star. It's just so meandering. Yeah, that's, uh, never really liked that movie. But, and it's uh, like we are gonna those... have to we are gonna yeah. have to wrap up. I was gonna say it might be time to punch out. Yeah, yeah. Check out Gangs of New York if you want. It's it's cool. It's better for memes. <laughs> and thank you for Highlander the animated series. Yeah. Uh you have a stream coming out you want to shout out? I might be on Pop Culture Minefield later, and maybe tonight I'll do a Judge Dread watch or um a watch of uh uh the up the long ladder and leprechaun to back to the hood. I haven't decided yet. Okay. And we'll be back on this channel Tuesday night, 5 p.m. Pacific time with the episode in, of Andromeda on sci-fi cinema and a round table on Thursday night. And the poll for next week's Saturday morning cartoons should be up tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Take care. <laughs>